Hi, Sue Wilson back again today and I've got a really cool card for you and guess what? This is made with a striplet. Can you believe that? So it's kind of a pinwheel idea. So let me show you how it's done and we'll introduce the dies to you. I'm going to be using one of the new pinpoint embossing folders for the background. This one's called cross stitch. Okay. And for our dies, I have the quilted block striplet. And I'm also going to be using the inside for the sentiment out of the Noble Dies, the classic adorned square. And the sentiment itself is coming from the amazing sentiment set, the uh, clear stamp set by Creative Expressions. So I'm going to start out with my embossing. We're going to use the pinpoint embossing folder here. Now this is an A4 size, so you've got a really large folder. So if you want big backgrounds, you can do that. However, we're just going to do a smaller piece here. So I'm going to just pop that in there. And you can line this up within the, the design so you're symmetrical if you want. I've already done one ahead of time, so I'm not going to fuss about with it too much. But your base plate, your folder with the card, and then the raspberry plate, that is your sandwich for the grand caliber. Run that through. And if you haven't seen these pinpoint embossing folders, they're absolutely amazing and very textural. They have these really neat little pinpoint areas of the design that just pop right up and you can feel them. So let me just get the edge of this and peel it back. What's really nice about these is you can use that side or you can use that side for a more textural feel. Really pretty. I just love the way these look. So I've gone ahead and done one ahead of time. Done a little bit of a, a white matte layer on it and added some pearls. But we're going to do one other thing below that. So let me show you that. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and coated three sides with some double-sided sticky tape. Go ahead and add a little bit on to the last side so you can see it. And what you want to do is just pull off a piece that's a little bit longer so you can grip it on both sides and line it up with the edge of your card there. If you're off a little bit, you can trim it when you're done so it isn't really an issue. And then trim away the extra bit here. Get my scissors. Just use the edge of the card there as a guide. Okay. So I'm going to coat this with some ice snow. This is the Cosmic Shimmer Glitter Jewels. So let me get that open, bring out a little bit of a um, piece of copy paper I can use underneath it. We're just going to sprinkle this on that edge. Give it a good rub into that sticky tape and then turn it and do the other sides. I love ice snow. I have to say, I think it's the perfect blingy thing for all your cards. It's clear, so it's not going to interfere with the colors you've used on your card or project. It's going to just accentuate it and give it a really pretty highlight. And it really doesn't take that much either. So rather than doing a whole sheet, you can do the little bit of the edge. And you can even Burnish that in and take off the extra bits so you can save even more of the product. Make it last longer. There we go. Okay. And pick up the copy paper, tidy it all back up. And by the way, this is our new larger size too. If you're kind of an addict like I am, that's what you'll want. Okay. So now I'm just going to center my embossed background in the middle of that a little bit of mounting foam. And because I've got some glitter there, I'm just going to add a bit of extra glue around the edge to make sure it's nice and secure. There, that should do the trick. Pop that into place. So we've got a nice pretty edge showing. Okay. I've already done a base for the card. Used a little bit of aqua card. I've pierced around the edge and I'm going to go ahead and seat this onto my mounting foam. I do love the way a dimensional card looks, so I, I must admit I like the mounting foam on my cards. If you prefer a flatter card, you can certainly put this together without the mounting foam and it'll have a beautiful look too. Now, what I went ahead and did ahead of time is I took this quilted block striplet. And if you notice, this square here and this square here are the same, 
with the one in the middle being different. So I've cut this twice in the pale aqua and twice in the darker aqua. And I've just used these two in pieces and matted them. And they're all done on, with a white top, OK? So I've got four pieces for each. Now, the way to do this card is to put four of them into a square and four of them into a diamond shape. And this makes it a little bit easier to kind of wrap your head around it, I think. For me, I think it's easiest to do this with um, glue dots. So that's what I'm going to show you. So let me just move that out of the way. And I like to start with my top piece here and just put a little glue dot right up in the top corner. Okay. So you can kind of move it around if you need to. I'm going to pop that right about like that. I'm going to do the next one outside here. Just get that into place. Put this one on the outside corner. Oops. Get them off my finger. OK. And let's put that on that corner right there. Pop that right down on the bottom. So you've got the, oops, a little bit low there. And this is why the glue dots are really handy, because you can kind of move it up and center it then. So let's go ahead and do that while we're, before we're completely finished. Move that one up a tiny bit more. There we go. So that's a better centering. So now I've got the square one. So I'm going to go ahead and put the glue dots on the ends of these. And what I'm just going to do is tuck this piece underneath here, but keeping that same square. So lining it up with the striplet, but keeping it square like that. OK, so I'm going to go to the next one. So now I can even pop a glue dot in place underneath this so it stays exactly where it's supposed to. So I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to pop a little glue dot on that one. Just tuck this under here. So if you can imagine this as a square, it would be lining up just like these four did here. OK. There we go. Go to my next one. And like I said, you can even Go ahead, mount that one down. Just put a little glue dot under there. There we go. Hold it into place. And then we'll put the last little edge there. Oops, oops, oops. Pop this one under here. Lining that up so you've got a nice square coming along. And I'll go ahead and put this corner down. Oops, get under there. A little fiddly. There we go. And here's our last one. So we're going to tuck this under like that. Bring this last guy back into place. And I'm going to use a glue dot on the side of this one to hold it into place. So you can get everything centered how you want it. Push that into place and straighten that up a little bit. So now we've got the center of that really nicely done. Um, and you can go ahead and add a little bit of extra glue. If you want to put glue in there, you can do that to make it more secure. Pop that down into place. However you want to do it, it's your call. But the glue dots allow you to kind of move it around a little bit. I went ahead and cut my sentiment using the center of the noble die. Did a little bit of inking, cut it in white. And I've also cut another piece as a backing. So I'm going to just glue this into place because the center of that die is separate. So you can cut both a decorative piece and a backing piece out of the same one. So it's really nice. Line this up. Oops, stay there. Get it all glued into place. So if you have any glue dots showing this under, you're going to put your sentiment over that so it's not going to show at all when you're finished. And pop that into place just like that. There you go. You've got a beautiful pinwheel. And you wouldn't even know that that is a striplet, would you?
So if you've enjoyed this video, please go to the Creative Expressions YouTube channel and watch some of the other videos. There's quite a few that we've done. Hope you've enjoyed it.